Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, we're about to get started here, and I will uh, very happily, gladly welcome our general manager, Kobe Altman, our head coach, John Beeline, and our chairman, Dan Gilbert, to the stage. We'll start out with some comments from Dan. It'll be about 40 minutes and then we'll get to everybody else. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome us all. There's a, several groups here that are here supporting us this morning. Really appreciate it. The Wine and Gold United members. Are you guys over? over thank you. Um, all of our corporate partners, um, uh, the family and friends that are here, media, everybody else. So welcome. Welcome here to the Cleveland Clinic Courts. Um, you guys were going to come up after, I thought. Okay, you're here now. That's good. We, we Everybody knows our general manager, Kobe Altman. And, of course, um, I might as well do it now. I was going to do it towards the end. We'll do it now. Just officially welcome our new head coach from the state uh, south or north, rather, north of you guys. But here now, um, John Beeline. And... John brings family and lots of it here. So I'm, I, want, I want to introduce his family. He's got a great family. I've met a few of them. Uh, his wife, Kathleen, long time wife, decades and decades. Um, and I believe his sister, Molly, and her husband, Dick, are here. Where are you guys? Right over there. And John has four kids um, and, and some in-laws and, and daughter-in-laws. Uh, Patrick, who's married to, uh, to Kristen. Where you, get, you guys? Are, how you doing? And we have Andrew, who's engaged to Morgan. How are you? We've got Mark, where are you, Mark? There's Mark back there. And then we've got Shauna, who is married to Ryan with us today, right over there, and, and, and four grandchildren. Hope I got this right, man. Okay, Finley, who's our little girl. Where are you, Finley? How you doing? Nice shirt, I like that shirt. Okay, then we've got Tommy, we've got Charlie, and we've got Johnny, is that right? Which, who's in the back? Tommy or Jar, that's, no, you, not, not that back, you're back. <laughs> Oh, Tommy's over there. Hello, Tommy. We have, so we've got Charlie and we've got Johnny. Charlie and Johnny. Charlie, Johnny. Okay. Charlie, Johnny. Got it. All right. Thank you. Welcome, you guys. Let's welcome the whole family. And thank you for supporting um, John, your grandfather and father and, and father-in-law. Um, so, so thank you. So I'm going to give you the least important things about John Beeline. Just uh, these are the least important. He's one of the best tactical basketball coaches around college or pro probably he's an innovator he is um he wins 64 percent of his games so far which is good and he's been doing it for four decades um, he's had a winning season 35 of his 41 seasons um, he's had a 20 postseason uh, appearances of his teams in, in the four teams that he's coached in college 13 of them have been in the ncaa and he's the only coach um, I believe who's still coaching somewhere, or was still coaching in the college, who made it to the NCAA with four different schools. Now, that's, a, that's a little known fact we, we dug up this morning, you know. Um, and I hope I, I can, I, one school I can't totally pronounce, but we, you know, we have West Virginia, and we have uh, Michigan, and we have, um, you know, my glass, I gotta put these glasses in. Canisius, that's how you say it. Canisius, and uh, the fourth one is? Richmond, Virginia, so good. You made it with Lemoyne? Five? It counts. It counts. There's, the five? Oh, there's five. The only man alive who has five <laughs> appearances. Okay, fantastic. Twelve seasons at University of Michigan. You guys know what he did at that program. It's been well documented. It's been well talked about it. Completely and totally. And I mean completely and totally because we used to enjoy the, the old days when, you know, before pre, pre John, being from the other side. Um, but he has completely and totally turned that program around like no other could have, and, and we're very excited to have him. So those are the least important things. So let me get into the more important things about John and Coach Beeline. He develops young players 
and he has an instant bond with young players. And, it, you know, I, I literally saw on Twitter, somebody showed me as I was walking in, he was literally in the gym just a few minutes ago giving Larry some, in a suit, I think, giving Larry some tips on the court as they were just kind of throwing the ball up. So he's getting right in there. He's a coach by nature. And he, as a person, you know, I just tell you, I met, John, I met him 11 days ago. So I only met John Beeline 11 days ago, and we hired him eight days ago. And then seven days ago, we went to the lottery together. And it, it happened very quick, but Kobe and his team have known him for a long time, particularly Mike Ganzi, who's on the, where's Mike, is he? Where are you, Mike? Oh, there you, from, those are all yours? <laughs> wow. Wait a minute, you, know, you only had one like a, a year ago, what's going on? Man. Multiplying, okay. So um, uh, Mike played for, for John. The first thing that John says, you know, we talked about Mike Ganzi and he said, uh, you know, Mike's like, he's like a son of mine and, and that's the kind of relationship they've had. They've been in touch for a long time and, and Mike has always you know, brought his name up to Kobe. These guys, since the season closed, we're working 24 seven. And as Kobe always will do, Kobe is not on the surface. He goes deep on everything he does, as does his team. And they uncovered many great candidates and, and finally um, ended up uh, with John Beeline, which I think um, is, is you know, the best choice for the Cavaliers and, and you know, not even close, even though the other candidates were very, very good. But John's you know, experience and what he brings and, and his, you know, all of the, qu the qualities that he has, he's authentic, he's charismatic, warm, he has all the integrity in the world, a tireless worker, he's tough, he's direct, he's honest, all the things that um, you would want in a head coach, and especially at the stage that we're in, and we can't wait to get started. Just to give, give you a little bit of flavor of the person and how he is, we're at the lottery, as you know, Tuesday night, and we're sort of in the front row, and they're all up there. And when we got the fifth pick, um, you know, you could see it on my face and Kobe's face, it wasn't, you know, John was sitting between us, and we're like, you know, so we're getting, you know, we try to, you try to cover it up, but it's real hard to get the fifth pick. You know, we were sort of getting, you know, if we stayed uh, we where we were, we'd have the second pick. And instantaneously, he just looks at it both, he goes, come on, you guys, that's it, let's go, fifth is good, we're good. And he saw my son, Nick, who's here today, where are you, Nick? Somewhere over here. Who's with us today with my other son, Grant, but he, he saw that Nick was just, he goes, come on, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go up there after this thing, we're going to pick him up. We're going to talk about five when we get off the, uh, when the lottery's over and let's go. I mean, that's the kind of person he is. And, and people instantaneously are attracted to him. And I think his credibility goes without saying. So, you know, ha having said all of that, uh, you know, I, I just feel very, very confident in this, this team here. It's probably the best one-two punch anybody could ever expect for a franchise like us. Very excited about the future. And, you know, I can't tell you the job that the front office has done, Kobe, in their search, they didn't just go right off the bat and go with one interview and say, let's, let's do that. And I think, you know, I, I, I personally couldn't be more pleased and I, f I feel like that's the feeling in the whole organization. So thank you, Kobe. Uh, welcome Coach Beeline. And wait, before you get up here, there's, there's a little bit of a video we were talking about. If it, if it, if we don't know if it's gonna work. So I'm just disclosing up front, it may not work. We wanted to show, A, the kind of guy Coach Beeline is and his take on one of his players who's now in our front office, Mike Ganzi. But is that thing still going or no? Where is, it? is there a screen somewhere? Anyway, so yeah. yeah. So you do like the, so analytics are your, where, where is it? that's one of your things. Yeah, yeah, I, analytics are important. It was really good. Uh, you know, when we play that one three one defense at um, West Virginia. You know, Mike played for him. Yeah. No, yeah. no, yeah, I yeah, know Ganzi. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a shooter, right? He's a great really shooter, good player for bouncy, him, yeah. good player. Right? Bouncy, yeah, good, really good player. Get out in the top of that one three one. Well, why'd you play one three one? Because he sucked on defense. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he, he was. You know, I. You know what? Brock told me that, but I didn't know that for sure. Now we know for sure. He's athletic, though. I thought he no, could yeah, but you know, he would just he, he'd stand there, and guys would just go by him, <laughs> and, and and so you know, everybody's always in retreat and trying to get him, but he would just go by him, and then he'd go down. Make a jump shot and say, well, what are you going to do now? <laughs> he's like the house on the side of the road. He's, yeah, a, yeah. he's, a, good guy. he's a good guy. Good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, good, yeah, he's nice. He's, 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 he's a good guy. He's, he's nice. yeah. so. A little sleepy sometimes. A little <laughs> yeah, sleepy. <laughs> you look at him sometimes and you, you, say, you, want, you, know, yeah, you I, want to get him woke. He's a deep yeah, thinker. Yeah. He's a deep thinker. Yeah, he's he's a very profound thinker. thinker. But anyway, so talk about the Cavs. Okay, so. Okay. So let me tell you about that. So this is. Within one hour of knowing Coach Beal, and that's from Kathleen's Kitchen that we all happen to be in. 
And at the end of our, our four hour maybe discussion, we were gonna go back and see Mike at the airport with the rest of our guys. I said, we gotta stage this for Mike. And, and so, <laughs> he, I mean, this guy's not only, everything I said, he's a great actor on top of it all. So this was all staged. <laughs> You should have seen Mike's face when we played to him. You know, Kobe says, we'll play it. And I go, well, I don't think we, I don't know. And he goes, come on, just play it for him. He needs the feedback. I go, I don't know if it's right. And we just turned it on and, but great job, great, you know, he might win a supporting actor role here. So that's enough said. Thank you all for coming again. Couldn't be more excited about what's happening here. Looking forward to the draft, the lottery. Most, most importantly, looking forward to continued success and grinding out of this team here. So I'm going to go to Kobe Altman first, who's going to formally introduce Coach Beeline. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> first, um, I want to thank uh, Dan Gilbert. Um, he's been, uh, sorry guys, um, incredibly supportive of our team and our front office team throughout this search. Uh, pushed us to go, to go really deep, to be thorough, uh, thoughtful, and um, help fund a, a, a month-long search um, that I think we did an incredible job in. So uh, thank you very much to, to Dan for, for that support. Um, secondly, uh, the Beeline family and uh, John's better half, Kathleen, thank you so much. Is this, is this move number eight or something, something like That's that? Right. <laughs> um, but um, what an incredible family. Thanks for being here and support. Um, and we're gonna rely on you and lean on you um, as well um, to create a culture here that you know how to do. And so thank you so much um, and we welcome you to our family, and, and we're so excited that you're here. And the four grandkids are here as well in Cavs gear, so that's really exciting um, as well. And then all our partners and members that are here uh, making this an incredible event. Thank you. You're so important to, to us um, and what we do every day, so, so thank you. Um, Dan went through a lot of the, the accolades, and, 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 we can, and that could be endless uh, with Coach. I mean, you talk about 800-plus victories, the – the countless NCAA tournaments, um, you know, two Final Fours, including two national championship game appearances. Um, but beyond all of that, uh, this is an incredible, incredible human being. And you, you feel that the second you're in his presence. Um, and that's, that's sort of what we needed. Um, we talked about when we, we did our, our search, we sort of started at the end. Um, we started at the end in terms of our, our wish list before we put any names to paper. This is what we, we want. This is what we're looking for. And so we wanted a cultural driver and a leader. Um, we wanted a teacher, okay? Uh, we wanted an innovator, someone that's gonna be able to adapt um, on the fly to personnel and to the times. Um, and then, you know, we want an incredible communicator. Uh, and on top of that, we also wanted someone that embraced analytics. And so Coach Beeline checked all those boxes to the point where um, after our initial meeting, some of, my, some of my guys were looking at us like, what are we doing here? This is our guy. And, and I had to say, no, let's, let, let's keep going. Um, but, but, but strong performance uh, early on. And, and uh, so, uh, but he checked all those boxes. And on top of that, just his incredible track record in, in, play, uh, in player development. And so we're, we're incredibly excited. Um, we're gonna rely on, on John to, to really create a culture here of core values, uh, to create a foundation uh, for our guys to be successful. And, and we're just super excited for him to drive this thing for us. And he's gonna be a partner with us um, in the front office and the coaching staff and the entire building and bring a positive energy uh, we talk about it all the time. You know, we want we want people, and this is from the coaching staff to our to, to our players, to the entire building. We want people with great attitude, great work ethic, and people that really want to be in Cleveland. And he embodies that fully. Um, he embraced this opportunity, and that was very meaningful to us. So, um, once again, I, I would love for everyone to help me uh, introduce Coach John Beeline as the next head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yep. It's, going be, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this has been a, a very exciting, uh, what Dan said, 11 days here, where uh, all of a sudden uh, 
uh, out of the, not out of the blue, but uh, certainly it happened very fast when uh, the Cavaliers became very, very, showed they were really sincerely interested. Um, I left the greatest university in the world. Some of you Ohio State people may not agree with that. <laughs> But it left the greatest university in the world, uh, a place that was special to Kathleen and I and our entire family, uh, to come to some place I think was equally as special. Uh, we got, I see a lot of the potential uh, and the high, high ceiling with the Cavs organization that I saw at the University of Michigan, that we saw at West Virginia, that we saw at Richmond, Canisius, Lemoyne, all the way back Erie Community College and Newfane Central. So it, it, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been a great week. Uh, not a good week, but a great week. Uh, and the more that I find out about the Cavaliers, the more that I, I find out about their players, every individual I meet here, uh, I see this team, this team off the court of superstars that allow us to have a great team on the court. So it's a... Uh, I, you know, I've coached at every level. Every, I, I guess I'm going to be the only guy to could coach at every level ever as a head coach. And uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a dream come true to be able to, to have a, a position like this. Uh, we're going to be, we're going we're to take our time here. We're going to put no labels. We're going to put no limits on this team. We're just gonna, going to do our best every day. I'm a huge growth mindset day guy that, that every day is we're just going to grow a little bit more and find even small victories and losses. I realize, uh, I think we lost 15 games in the last two years combined, right? Uh, that's, that's at Michigan, at Michigan, <laughs> at, Michigan. <laughs> at Michigan. And uh, we, uh, I realize that will probably not be happening again in my lifetime with the Cavs. Uh, but at the same time, it is a, uh, uh, we're gonna embrace all those things and watch. I love the young roster. I love the draft picks and the potential that we have uh, at, for flexibility now and in the future. And uh, I love working with, I, I, I text Kathleen and we were interviewing uh, uh, potential candidates in the, uh, at the combine. And I just text her, I said, I love this. I love being a part of something like this. So, uh, just blessed. I've been blessed my whole life, say, starting with, a, with a, the family I grew up with, uh, meeting Kathleen and 40 years of marriage, the children uh, that we have. I think we, uh, the children, the grandchildren, uh, my brothers and sisters, it's just been an incredible ride. And I, I talked, uh, she could not make it today. I actually have an 80-year-old sister and her husband, uh, Patty and Tom, live uh, in Novelty, Ohio. It's right, it's just east of here. And uh, she's 80 years old and still working full time. And she said to me, you're just getting started, man. You're just getting started. So, so blessed. We, we do have one issue that we, we have a grandson whose favorite team is the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. His name is Johnny. We're getting him there, though. Yeah. It, it, what, but here's the good news. Here's the good news. Up until we were hired here, Cavs was number 20 on his list. Now he says we are all the way up to number two. <laughs> so that's good. Right, Johnny? But we're going to get you to number one. So it's, it's as I said, this is going to be, I, I look forward to number one, to, to getting to know our partners, to getting to know all, all the people that make this work behind the scenes. I, I get, believe it or not, I'm one of the coaches that looks forward to getting to know our press and our coverage, right? John will attest to that, won't you, John? I'm pretty good with it. I, I mean, I get along with the press. I respect you so much for your job, and we're going to work together to put out this great message of Cleveland Cavalier basketball. And I'm really looking forward to working with this team. Uh, I, I'm just uh, so uh, excited about the, possibil the possibility of working with them in the offseason without limitations. <laughs> And that's going to be a great thing for us to and, and you know, just do. Colin flew from the Philippines in here to be here today and got here at 6 a.m. Larry was here before I got here at 9 o'clock. I've sp spoken with every player on the team thus far that from the returning roster. And the excitement in their voice, I feel like I'm talking with the be the, some of the best young men I've ever coached, whether they're at West Virginia, at Michigan. I feel like I'm talking with those, those uh, young men again. 
who, who are all like sons to me. So it's an excitement. Be, I mean, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I feel so good, and I hated leaving a great place like the University of Michigan. It could only be for something special like this. We have something special like here, right here in front of us. Uh, thanks, guys. We're going to open up for questions from our media, uh, our press corps. Uh, the coach was uh, referring to. Glad to hear that, coach. Thank you. Um, What's not to love? Please, uh, please uh, remember uh, to identify yourself and your outlet. And we have Sharome on this side and Alyssa over here with the mics. And wait for the mic. Thank you. Hey, John, Tom Withers, Associated Press. Welcome to Cleveland. Thanks, Tom. Um, obviously, 40 years in the college ranks. Was there a part of you who felt that maybe if you didn't try the NBA, there would be some regret? No, not really. I, I, I didn't put it like that, like it's gotta, I got to get to this level. I was looking for if the, le if the next level was not the right organization, it was, it was going to be fine. It had a great legacy, and, and if we could have finished in Michigan, I felt, I really felt I had these years left in me to coach. And, uh, it, but when this opportunity, I looked at this opportunity and I just said, you know, this look, this feels just like the Michigan opportunity. This feels like when people say, what are you crazy? Why are you changing these jobs and go into a different one? It just felt like this was a, 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 a healthy change for us and, and, a, and another opportunity to do something special. And if I could follow, um, of those 41 years, John, what would be, and there's got to be a multitude of them, but is there one thread that has allowed you to be successful at every level like you have been? Yeah, I think we, you, get, you, you, get, you find a way to get really good players that will play together, and you find really good staff, right? And then you have incredible family support. You know, when and anybody is here, and Bernie's here, Bernie Bickerstaff is here, when you have a, coach, a, a coach's wife, are incredible and that has been the big thread through the whole thing that allows me to go to work focused every day and understands because all those 800 wins there's about 400 losses there too that you got to get through but those are the ones you grow through and so uh, but but I would say the people around me uh, we've been able to really be good at selecting this and that's what I'll do with the staff now this will be this will be something that'll be very intentional I'll take my time uh, so excited to have J.B. Bickerstaff on board, and uh, that, that would be the common thread. People around you. Hey, John, Tony Zarella, 19 News. How are you? Hi, Tony. Welcome to town. Uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, does anything change moving from coaching? I know they're all young, but change, coaching college kids to now professionals, getting paid, longer season, all of those dynamics. Yeah, yeah I, I, the only thing I'll say is I've, I've gotten advice from some pretty good people. And I, this has been quoted a little bit, but Jeff Van Gundy reached out right away. I, Jeff was my last recruit at Nazareth College back in 1983. And then uh, Jerry West, I got to know really well uh, in my times at West Virginia. And both of them said, do not, you know, you certainly have to tweak, but be who you are. There's a reason why you have got to this level, why you were selected. Do not, uh, Jerry told me a long time ago, a, a, a problem some college coaches have think they have to change. We'll certainly change. That's why I'm still coaching 40 years. I've changed from Newfane to the junior college to all the divisions. I continue to change and evolve. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm going to try to fit this, what I believe are really strong, and then adapt. In, uh, whether it's Kobe, whether it's JB, whether it's the rest of the staff, whether our strength coaches, our dietitians, they're going to help me adapt too. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Welcome, John. Where are you, Chris? Right here okay. in the front. Uh, Kobe mentioned culture driver. That's a big buzzword yeah. around here. What are the principles that define a John Beeline culture? Well, I, I, we'll, we'll develop a, a new you know, core values when we're here that probably I'll, I can lead the guys to what usually works with big companies or worked with our teams in the past. You know, I think that, that what we have right now, that we're a team first all the time, is, would be one. None of them have... There's only one that has more importance than the others, that we're going to have a great team, that we're going to love the Cavaliers, we're going to understand the Cavaliers, we want to be with the Cavaliers, right? So we have great passion for it. We have a great attitude of gratitude, right? You'll see our teams, I think they, they would show that if you were even interviewing them. Hopefully they, they, this is the way that team will be. We'll have uh, this great appreciation, right? We're going to be a really hardworking team during the season, outside the season. 
and probably the biggest one is integrity. That this, you can't cheat this game, you can't cheat life, um, you can't cheat this opportunity, and we put all those things together. And but but whether whether it's our all our current players are going to have part of this. I'm not going to say this is my culture, go live it. No, we say this is our culture, let's build it. And if you put have they they have skin in the game and they make the decisions on, on their commitment, uh, everything changes as opposed to the coach who's enforcing it on them. And to follow up, this is a team that won 19 games last year. So what is your timeline? What are your expectations for when this can be yeah. a winning program again? Again, that's, I'm still getting my feet wet here, and there's a lot of things going on. I'll know a lot more as the season uh, goes on. Uh, but this is, we're not going to put limits on this team, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, there's, whether you want to call it a renaissance, because we did win, but what is the rent? How can you measure that? We're not going to be able to measure it sometimes in wins and losses. Uh, I'll see the small victories that all of a sudden something I'm working with Larry on works in the game. Yeah, we lost the game, but now that's going to open a whole new door, right, uh, for, for Larry. And saying Colin, you know, just watching him, and, and I'm not saying because he's just here today, because Kevin and I already talked about this as well. When you get them to, to be able to do something they haven't done before, Wow, now, now all of a sudden, big, big windows and doors open for us. Good morning, John. John Tellich, Fox 8. Welcome hey, to John. Cleveland. Good luck to you. Thanks. Is there a secret sauce, secret ingredient, per se, to get players to play well together? It sounds basic, but yeah. I'm certain that there's more that goes into it. I, I think you, you, there's an educational piece there that you, you, you're teaching them from what the, what the teams that are successful do. Right, and, and what coaches have done with, with those teams, and to get, get them to va value the assist as much as the, uh, the points. Get them to value, show them in video. We're, we're really big film watchers and, and video watchers. I mean, the kids are sitting in this incredible film room. They got all the snacks and food and whatever they want, and we're gonna show you, and your legs, you're, you'd be playing a video game back home, right? And show them what winning basketball looks like. Um, we, we sat last night with Mike Hartman, and he showed me what our record was last year. It was even when, we, and it was after Kevin was back, when we had really high assist numbers. So, and then, you, but you're saying, look at Golden State. Look at the winning, the, the number of assists. Look at Milwaukee Bucks, the number of assists that they have. And you sort of teach it. And then you reward it. And you talk about it more than the dunk that somebody had. You're talking about the little things that, that bring about winning basketball. Marla Ragnar, Akron Beacon Hi, Journal. Marla. Welcome, good to see you, and Thanks. welcome to the whole contingent. The whole crew. <laughs> there's more. There's many, yes. many more of us. There's, a, there's. I have, I have nine, uh, eight siblings, who, had, who, who, in a good uh, Catholic family, had 44 grandchildren, and then those 44 grandchildren are now over 100 great grandchildren. So we'll be here in force. We will be here. <laughs> I just want to know what is it in your DNA that loves the rebuild. Yeah, um, the rebuild's not going to be a word we're going to use here, but it is going to be one of, of the, of, I saw it more as the renaissance type of let's just, let's just change and let's, let's see what we can do through, through different trial and error. I don't know, but it, it, would, it was one that was appealing to me every single time that we decided to do that. And, said, and some people would say, I think every job, and probably this one, what, are you crazy? Why are you doing that? And, is, and, and I say, Exactly why you said that is why we're doing it. You know, the opportunities and challenges go hand to hand. So uh, when, I, when we can be in these situations, it's so gratifying to, to, to get, turn a program and get, look at all those banners up there. It's been done before. Why can't it be done again? There's no question about it. So, but in, in time, we'll get it done. I know you were working your way up, but there was a, is there a, also a satisfaction when you get someplace to the level you want and ready to go, you know, to the next one? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm so sort of grateful because I know that, particularly in the NBA, uh, as a head coach, it's so much more basketball that allows me to really do what I love the best. I love being, it was 10 minutes today in my shirt and tie, but being with Larry Nance there today, right? Cowan and I already talked, if he's gonna stick around, I wanna put him through a few drills that I want him to work at while, while I'm away. So that's, that's what makes me tick, being on that floor with those guys, being in a film session and, and with them and, and watching them grow as players. 
Coach Spencer Davies, hey, Spencer. Ball Insiders, how you doing? Um, so making this transition from college to pro, uh, the language is different. Yeah. Uh, communicating with your players. Uh, how important is to you to establish a staff that's veteran, been yeah. around the league to help you with that? Well, I, I think it's really important. And that's, you know, where JB and I connected from the first time we met last week. And that I want, I want to be able to speak the, the language the best that I can adapt. Uh, but they also, there's, they're going to have to adapt some of my language as well because it may be a concept that they don't have a word for. Uh, but I do need to learn. That was one of the first advices Dave Griffin gave me as well. Learn to speak their language uh, because that's really important. But uh, then we, we get to that point where we're all on the same, we're on the same page. Then uh, that's where we really can take off. And the analytics portion of it, yeah. uh, how did that come into play when you got, we were talking to Kobe and Dan yeah. about the entire thing? Well, we've, we've slowly, you know, we don't have the resources that you have. We have a lot of resources in Michigan, but we don't have the resources. So that was when I saw everything that could be done, right? That was like, wow, this is, you can get, you can get too analytical as well. But we, I want to find the sweet spots that have been important to me for years and the ones that our analytics staff has found important to NBA basketball and try to blend those two. You'd be crazy not to be, have this always in your head so that, and, and not just for me, teach the players, teach Colin what efficiency looks like as a point guard, right? That, that so many times they may come in and, and, and someone like a point guard, for example, right? He thinks 22, three, and two was, and three turnovers was a good game. But maybe 18 and eight, right, was a winning game. With two, and, and two turnovers. So if you just, and then he's looking at that in the stat sheet instead of how many points or what percentage he shot. So these are all things you teach. You, I have to learn some things myself. You teach your staff what you think is important, but then you got to teach the players so they understand what, is a, what really is a good game for you and what is really a good team for, uh, game for your team. Good morning, John. Aaron Coleman from WAKR Radio in Akron. Welcome to Cleveland. Thanks, Aaron. All right. Uh, what, how humbling was it for you to uh, receive the congratulations from some of your former players at Michigan, guys like Jordan Poole and Matthews and all of those guys, once it was uh, public knowledge that you had uh, taken the job here with the Cavaliers? I mean, just the impact that you had on those guys. How humbling was it to uh, receive those congratulations? I mean, it, it was, I was very grateful to have coached those guys and so many. You know, I think we heard from, ev from everybody all the way down, Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway, Nick and, Nick and I were on the phone uh, the other day, but you know, Mo, DJ, all these guys that are in the pros right now um, have all reached out. Because they all, I don't think there was ever a, a time where I said, I gotta get to the league, I gotta get to the league. But they understand that so we, had, we had gradually changed a lot that we did back when Mike and Patrick were playing for us to more of an NBA style. A little, uh, just a mix of it, and uh, so hearing from them all, they they like Karis Levert, for example, and I forget him. You know, he said, "Coach, you're, what we do will work. You just got to make sure you have the right people on that team that that will play unselfishly," and that's from Karis. And so um, he he had he had told me about some franchises maybe wouldn't be good for me, right? And then he he very much knows this franchise is where I, I would want to be. Hey, John, Jason Lloyd from The Athletic. Yeah. Just obviously the college game has been under fire and under investigation, and there's a, a lot going on there. And j I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a party that just wanted to get away from that, from the scandals, from recruiting, from only being able to hold on to your best players for one year and, and have a different opportunity now, not having to deal with that. Yeah, that, that's a frequently asked <clears throat> question right now. Um, I believe that uh, bas college basketball is going through a tra transition right now and it needs to really evaluate itself and what's best for the future of the sports. It's, I mean, it's had betting scandals in the 50s and the 60s. It's had the first time of the Spencer Haywood uh, lawsuit and everyone saw this is going to kill college basketball. It didn't. It had the one and the, the guys going right to the pros. It's had the one and done. It always makes it. And I, it, the, the people with the NCA, Dan, Dan Gavitt in, in particular, uh, they get it, and they're working on it. Their process of getting things done, right? Sometimes will take longer, but I see them seeing some of these issues. But that's not why I'm the new coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
It's about this opportunity right here to grow with these young men and coach in the great state, of, uh, great state of Ohio. I guess I can say that now, right? And in the, and I grew up in in north of Buffalo on Lake Ontario, right? Yeah, uh, in, in 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 loving the Buffalo Braves and the Buffalo Bills, and uh, being in Cleveland, right? I've been in Cleveland, I think th downtown Cleveland three times in my life to see Rocky Calavito and Al Kaline in the 60s in the first Major League Baseball game I ever saw. I've been there when LeBron actually made his announcement he was going to Miami, and, and I thought the streets would go on fire for a second there. I, and I've been here to watch Patrick and Mike beat Cleveland State in one of the greatest NCAA games, certainly the best in ever in Cleveland played. And it's just, I look at it, and this is me. This is Kathleen. This is, this is going to be our new home. Well, kind of the, the flip side of that, I know there's an old cliche, coaches are hired to be fired. Uh, you've never been fired. That's right. And th this is a franchise who, but, but. Hey, where's Dan? Dan? Could Dan answer this question? <laughs> but, but the last three coaches have not survived more than two and a half to three years, yeah. and one of them even won a championship. Yeah. So is that anything that you looked into? Is that concerning to you at all? Ne never looked at it one single time, uh, not in any way. And not after I, I met uh, Kobe, or I've met Kobe several years ago, but Dan and, uh, you know, I realized, you know, the coaches, we don't complain on paydays, right? That's part of this job, right? That you're, you are under it and you have to get it done and it's part of it. Uh, but I've been able to stay away from that and that's the only plan here is that uh, we're going to get this right, right? And I'm going to coach as long as I can coach. And I, I hope that's a long time. Coach uh, David Yarger, Niagara Frontier Publications, up in Niagara County. Yes. Uh, my question to you is, uh, you started your coaching career in Western New York at uh, New Fane High School before you worked your way up the ranks. How surreal is it for you personally to rise from the small town guy up to NBA coach, and how did your home play a role in your upcoming as a coach? You know, it Every time when I got the head job at New Fane Central as a head coach there in, in like 77, I think, that was like the amazing account. I made it. I'm a, high, I'm a varsity high school coach. And then when I went to Erie Community College, my dad said, why are you, why are you doing this? You got a, I was making $7,000 at the year at the time. You're leaving a great job. You're being paid $7,000 a year. Why are you leaving? You're in the union. So I have never looked at it like, first of all, I don't know what the word surreal means. Everybody uses it, but I don't think I really understand it. But it is unusual, I guess, or, or real. It is just a great, this is another opportunity on this incredible journey that Kathleen and I have been on. And, and, and everyone keeps getting better and better, and we have, we have the plan to, to make that the same way. Emmett Golden, ESPN Cleveland. Um, what do you like most about Colin Sexton's game, and where do you believe you can help him grow as a player? I, I see this explosiveness that it, is incredible, and whether it's off the dribble and even off the catch, get him in now that he's really become a uh, had a great year shooting threes. You know, get him off the catch where he's in a triple threat. I see that, and then I, what I what I, everything that I have talked with every I haven't talked with Avery. From Alabama yet, but but just talking with all anybody who's coached him now, that terrific uh, uh, player with a high basketball IQ, just looking for direction now. He's 19 years old, right? Just looking for direction, wants to be a great player, has all the work habits to be a great player. I, I, I'd be lying if I said that's a, one of the one of the one of the many reasons why I, I, we took this job. Great great guards, right? Drive this league as we saw last night again. They're, they're, they're a tremendous uh, influence in each game. Uh, John, Terry Pluto from the Plain Dealer. You're now going to be coaching where probably more than half your players are going to make more money than you do. Yes, uh, unless Dan has decided to break an all-time record there, <laughs> oh, yeah. but I don't think so. So well, number one is where you, you are in that environment where, let's face yeah. it, you know, the, you're coaching a bunch of millionaires. Secondly, um, and this maybe goes to some of that. Other than Brad Stevens, there's been very few coaches that have gone directly from college to the NBA and been successful. Okay, your thoughts on both? Well, I, they they deserve to be paid that the, the wage they're paid, the players, and they, and and whether they're paid more than me or less than me, that's irrelevant. I mean, we're going to have a relationship where we're not looking at each other's paychecks. We're trying. 
they want to get better, we're going to make them better. And then they're going to get bigger paychecks, right? So that, that sort of the mentality that we're all in this thing together. And the second part was? Just about very few coaches have gone directly yeah. from college to the NBA and done well. Yeah, and I, I, I can't speak to that, but I did talk with Brad and Billy Donovan both last year at length uh, about this move. And uh, they, they, you know, they've done very well with it, uh, both playoff teams. And uh, they were 100% supportive of it. But I talked with Lon Kruger yesterday on the way here, and, and Lon said, I'd love to share more ideas cause, because I, I see some sort of things I can really help you with in the future. Uh, I, I, and again... What, what, uh, what Jeff Van Gundy did tell me, though, was my advice to you is don't get too much advice. <laughs> right. And so I'm, you know, I'm going to yeah. try and blend that and, and get a feel for that. How, how soon was it from when the Cavaliers first contacted you to you had the meeting to you got the job? Like, what was the whole time frame? Uh, I, you know, I, I knew they were in the, went once... Um, they, they decided to make a change to the head coaching. I knew about the opportunity. And then, uh, but they had a vast search going on. And uh, if they, uh, I, I really felt they should go through, through that search and see what they want. And if they still you had a unique interest, extreme, you, you can maybe talk to me at the back end of it, if they're unique. But if they had their guy, I was at the University of Michigan. I was, I was at a great, great job. But if they had their guy, fine. If they did not have their guy, um, then... And, and they felt that I was a vi really viable candidate, uh, that uh, I would be very interested. And that then from that point, it went real quick. After we talked, and then Dan was, next thing I know, Dan sitting in our kitchen, and uh, we, were, we, were, we were on it. And we, we really, I think that the connection was immediate, but it all happened s slowly over a week, and then bang, bang, I knew they were serious when Dan showed up. And you guys didn't know anything about it, did you? <laughs> we had, I have no agent. We had nobody trying to do it. And uh, we, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was great. I was glad we could do it that way. All right, here, Coach. Yep. Uh, Corey Perez, NES Sports Insiders. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about how young the roster is, and uh, you said a renaissance. So can you talk a little yeah. bit, because something that would help that would be have an actual system in place. So can you talk a little bit yeah. about the system that you plan on putting? Well, I, I like the idea. I think that we'll use some of the things that we've used for success. I mean, I'm watching. Yeah, Kathleen and I will sit in the, in, the game, in the game, and I'll be watching an NBA game, and I'll be giving names for all the actions that they just have different language. But to get that through, because of a lot of it's read and react, a lot of it's flow, where I don't want Colin looking back at me and say, what player are we running? I will, we will run sets, you know, but they'll come out of, out of uh, you know, dead balls or when the offense is in front of me. So it will, t but I do have the summertime to do that. I'm not limited by hours. And, you know, I think the guys will be coming in and I'll have a chance to coach in the summer league. I plan on coaching at least one of the sessions, if not, if not all the sessions. And uh, just get me up to the speed. I think it's Billy and Brad told me that was their thing: is the speed of the 24-second clock, and the speed of the game, and the and the, the talent level uh, was one of the things they took the time to adjust to. Chris, again, John, uh, you have JB now as your associate yeah. head coach. What's the process for you in filling out the remainder of the coaching staff? And do you expect to keep any of the guys that are currently yeah. on staff? I think everybody is a candidate, you know, that is, has some viable NBA experience. Uh, so possibly even a, a, a collegiate uh, coach as well. So uh, every, there's a lot of uh, opportunity there for Kobe and I and Mike and the whole staff here to sit down and say, what is, what is it we need? I, we, you just don't go, I need a good basketball coach. No, let's say if, if I go about, let's say I hire a big man coach, then I, got, I, I, wanna, I want somebody to work with the guards. Um, I hire a defensive coach. I need an offensive coach. All these things will sort of come together, but it'll be one piece will affect the next until we have the whole staff, back row included. I want everybody to have a, a, a certain role that makes us really united and really very efficient in how we operate. And, Kobe, not to leave you out of this here, um, you mentioned from the very beginning that you were willing to go the college ranks. Um, Terry talked about the transition from college to the pros. What specific traits did you see in John that make you feel like maybe he can be an outlier like Brad, like Billy? 
I, it's a great question. I think, first of all, in terms of um, he, he doesn't get like the, the marquee talents, like in, in terms of like the McDonald's All-Americans, the top 20 kids. Um, he gets the kids that are top 100 and then somehow turns them into lottery picks. And we watch that through his system. And so when we're, we're talent evaluating, we're like, wow, that, that kid looks really skilled, smart, knows how to play, pass, um, dribble, drive, shoot. Um, and out of the system, he develops these players um, to incredible levels, really. Um, Karis LeVert was ranked 248 coming out of high school. And, and now look what Karis is doing. Same thing with Nick Stauskas. And, and so I think that translates. I think his skill development translates. And, and when we're in this era of, of Cavaliers basketball, when player development is so important to us, uh, we need a teacher. You know, we need a teacher, um, and we need someone that's going to drive that player development, especially with the draft picks that we have. And it's so important for us um, to, to get the most out of those guys and teach them the right way to play. And so on top of a, a lot of other things, the thing that was, was really appealing to us, and especially during this, this time period, is, is who's going to really develop our guys to be great. Um, and that age group, 18 to 22, um, he's been the best at it, just been the best at it. So that was really intriguing for us. Coach, uh, Joe Gabriel, Cavs.com. Um, Dan, in his intro, said that you connect really well with young people. Why do you think that is? Or young players, I should say. I think I, there's a lot of practice at it. And you realize you have to build relationships with them. The, that, the, the day when you used to be the, the coach, you say, well, my coach used to treat me that way so I can treat these guys like dogs and get the most out of them. That, does, that doesn't work. You can't, you can't coach that way. So my hope is that... that uh, that's, that will be so strong with us again. They have great relationships with their players, so they play so hard for you. Your family, you all become family because of those relationships. You know, and, and so I, I think it's a, it's a strength of ours, and I think we're also a strength to the relationship to have a point where there's respect both ways, and we also have, they have freedom. So those, that, that's, I'm hoping, you know, it's hard to understand sometimes what you're doing right. It's easy to know what you're doing wrong, much easier. Hard, but there's been some way that we've been able to get the most out of these young men when we coached them, and that's the plan here. Okay, that's going to uh, wrap it up for us. Thank you, Kobe. Thank, Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. And uh, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for coming out today.